something really important. And then you think, man, I wonder if Home Alone 2 made more money than Home Alone 1. I gotta look into this now. Sorry, important work, something more pressing has come up. I do stuff like that all the time. And what's so annoying is once I start looking into one thing, I'll see something else I wanna research. For example, in the Home Alone situation, I'll be looking at that and I'll say, oh wow, Joe Pesci's in that movie. I don't know much about Joe Pesci. Maybe I should learn everything about Joe Pesci. And then I'll spend hours doing all this Joe Pesci research, and now I know so much about Joe Pesci. But it's useless information. It's never going to help me. I never heard of a situation where a guy's been in an alley with a dude with a knife. He's like, you're going to die tonight. Unless you can tell me the name of the album Joe Pesci put out when he was a little kid. Little Joe sure can sing. Damn it, you're free to go. How come so many people know that? I gotta stop integrating Joe Pesci trivia into my murders. People know more about him than I anticipated. I always waste time like that. The other night, I was up late. I remembered I'd never seen any of those Saw movies before. They're not supposed to be particularly good movies, but a friend of mine told me, Aziz, you gotta watch Saw 1. The twist at the end of Saw 1 is crazy. And I love twists at the end of movies. So I went on YouTube and I typed Saw Ending. Sure enough, clip comes up. I know what you're thinking, uh, Aziz, you didn't see the rest of the movie, the clip won't make any sense. Don't worry, I'm not stupid. First, I went on the Saw Wikipedia page and I read the plot summary. And when I got to the last paragraph, I stopped. And then I went back and watched that video and let me tell you, I did not see that coming. <laughs> Someone recently sent me a password to one of those online porn sites, and the password worked. And I don't know if anyone here's ever had membership access to any of those sites, but it is incredible. If you're counting on the fence, like, I don't know, it just doesn't seem like it would be worth it to spend it, do it. Now, the trend in these sites is they try to make it seem like this stuff all really happened, like this is real life. These aren't actors, this stuff really happened. So they have dumb names like reallifedickparty.com. And the videos are all the same. These guys go up to some girls like, excuse me, uh, girls want to come back to our place and have a dick party? And the girls are always like, uh, yeah! And they get in their car, they drive back to the house, they have sex, they film it, and it goes reallifedickparty.com. Does anyone think those clips are real? They want people to think it's real. Every now and then they should have a clip where some guys go up to some girls like, excuse me, uh, you girls want to come back to our place and have a dick party? And the girl's like, what? That's disgusting. Get out of here, you asshole. Reallifedickparty.com. <laughs> then you're at home like, man, I guess it is real. Those girls didn't want to have a dick party at all. They just continued on to Whole Foods. <laughs> now, the first video I watched on the site, these guys go into a donut shop, right? And they're talking to the girls at the donut shop, they're like, uh, hey, so what do you think of us maybe giving you some money and then we can hook up in the back of the donut shop? And the girl's like, okay, that sounds good. She was not a very good actress. So they go in the back and they start hooking up. So there's a guy hooking up with the girl in the back of a donut shop. Now this guy eventually does what any reasonable person would do in that situation, and he puts a donut around his dick. Now, the woman is performing fellatio type services and she's getting dangerously close to this donut. And then at one point she just um, takes a bite of the donut. And I don't know why, but as soon as that happened, I just went, whoa, that was awesome. What an amazing choice by that actress. I wonder if that was improvised, like the donut was just there and just like, um, and the director's like, But what does that say about me as a person that I got so excited? I guess I just like food too much. It's a good thing I don't write the scripts for those videos. My script would be like, all right, so you pick this girl up in Los Angeles and you drop her off at this restaurant called Animal and she orders the hamachi tostada, the poutine, the rabbit legs, and the strawberry pound cake. And they bring her everything and she's like, oh my God, this looks so good. And she eats everything. There's not a bite left. And she's like, wow. That was delicious. Maybe the best meal I've had all year. RealLifeDickParty.com
You know what's weird about that donut video? Oh they man. They filmed it in a real donut shop. Which means they had to pay a donut shop owner to use that as a location. But I guess if you're a donut shop owner, the risk is pretty low. What are the chances of someone at home watching the video going, Oh no, that's where I get my donuts from! That's what goes on back there? I just thought they were putting chocolate and jelly in some of the donuts. But that's gotta be happening to some dude. They film all these videos in the same town, I imagine. There's gotta be some dude waking up every morning like, Oh no, not the bank too! I'm supposed to make a deposit today! And there's jizz everywhere! I always thought the best thing that could happen in the donut video is the girl takes a bite of the donut and then she starts walking away. And the guy's like, hey, where are you going? She's like, I wasn't trying to suck your dick. I just wanted a bite of that donut. That looked delicious. Bob's Donuts, the best donuts in town. We won't make you suck a dick for years. I was doing a show one night and they had a woman signing my entire act to the left of the stage. And whenever I got to that pump sign where I said, jizz everywhere, she went like this. <laughs> and it was amazing. I said jizz everywhere a few more times just to make sure I understood what was going on. Because that had to be an on-the-fly sign for jizz everywhere. She's like, okay, there's jizz. Uh-oh, it's everywhere. Because everywhere can be eh. You'd look crazy every time you had to sign everywhere. Hey, I'm new in town. Is there a Jimmy John's nearby? Oh, those are everywhere. There's a Jimmy John's here, 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 and here. That's got to be custom for jizz. Jizz everywhere. The ceiling, the carpet, the walls, the plates, the Tupperware, the television. I don't know what happened, but it's everywhere, and I'm really sorry about it. Also love that jizz is just me. That's jizz. Me. No more thought went into that. The guy's up late developing sign language. Oh, guys, I'm really tired. Can we pick up tomorrow? I'm really beat. I really need some sleep. A few more words? Fine. What's the next word? Jizz? That's jizz. What if it's everywhere? That's jizz everywhere. How come I get all the dirty words? Brian got puppy. I got jizz everywhere. And the only reason I bring this up is, you know, it could be days from now, weeks from now, months from now, years from now. But one day, one of you guys could be walking around and see a deaf person about to walk into a room where there's jizz everywhere. And he'd be like... And they'll be like... Phew. And they'll head somewhere else, free of jizz. Oh, man. I'm from South Carolina, and thank you. And whenever I tell people that, they're always like, oh, oh no, but it's so racist there, and your skin is brown. How did you survive? And sure, certain parts of South Carolina can be pretty racist, more racist than other parts of the country. But what these people forget is that the food there is delicious. So growing up in South Carolina, it's kind of like, oh, that guy to say the N-word? Ooh, fried chicken and biscuits. Never mind. Nom, yum, 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 yum. Even if right now some dude stood up and was like, hey, I'm going to say a bunch of racist stuff, but afterwards I'll give you a biscuit. I'd be like, that's a weird deal, but I'll take it. Because I hate racism, but I love a good biscuit. I just think it's a little silly when sometimes people act as if all the really crazy racism is just in places like South Carolina, Alabama, Mississippi, or whatever, because I've seen crazy racist stuff happen everywhere. I have a friend in L.A. He's Korean, right? And he got locked out of his apartment. So he called a locksmith, okay? And the locksmith's getting all his info. He's like, what's your last name? And he's like, Chun. The guy goes, what kind of last name is that? The guy goes, uh, Korean-American? And the guy goes, I hate Korean-Americans. Korean-Americans are trying to destroy America. And he hung up on him, wouldn't unlock his door. And I thought, what? So this locksmith does no business with Korean-Americans. But I wondered how many Korean-Americans would have to call him before economically he couldn't afford to be that racist. Like, what if Korean people just kept calling him? Would he eventually be like, 
Damn it, man. I would have made $5,000 yesterday if I didn't hate Korean people. This is so stupid. Korean Americans aren't trying to destroy America. They can't even find their keys. But then, weirdly, that stereotype would get integrated into his racism. Like, he would see Korean people and he'd be like, Pfft. Let me guess, can't find your keys? Ching chong, bing bong, where are my keys? He sees a Korean dude opening a door, he's like, Ha! There's something you don't see every day. The <laughs> Korean dude actually had his keys for once. Na 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 na, where's my keys? Na 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 na, they're in your house. GG.